So just hang with us a few minutes, okay? I'm saying a prayer. <laughs> How is it, John? Okay, I see there's about, right now, a bunch of people logging on. John, you're going to have to shut your door or turn down your volume. Sorry, we're doing technical stuff here right now, okay? Um, Carol, we thoroughly enjoyed a great time at your retreat. Oh, I have to grab something while we're waiting to go live. Just a second, okay? Okay. I, John thinks we're A-OK, -okay, that we're on Facebook and we're on um, YouTube and all that good stuff. So, <sighs> I had such a great, great weekend. You have no idea. I went up to uh, Chico with Wendy and Meryl to Cindy Needham's studio, and we sewed for four days. Uh, I also, you're going to laugh, went to bed at 8 at night and would wake up at 7 in the morning. It was fabulous. We stayed at the Oxford Suites, and I was kind of concerned because it was graduation weekend there, Chico. And um, I thought, you know, it would be like wild. Not at all. Not at all. And when you go to Cindy's retreats up in Chico, she has a rate there. So it's really a, a very, very good deal. So let me show you, before we get going, we're going to talk about um, sewing our blocks together. And you can see I made it out of Tula fabric, and there's a story behind that. <laughs> we are still in utter chaos here. Complete, complete chaos. Now, where is the thing I want to look at? There it is. So the floors went in, and they're beautiful. And one of you had said, be careful when you sit down because you might just go whoosh, you know, on your chair. I understand that. You've given me fair warning. <laughs> this stuff is a vinyl that goes down in sheets and it's absolutely fabulous. In fact, right now, I mean, there's an echo in here because the place is a disaster. Stuff has to be filled in. But I can get in and out of my sewing machine without major aerobic moves. Uh, here's the corner. So what I've, what I've got to do now is we're still waiting. Well, actually in that area, I'm going to have built-ins, but I'm going to get back as much as I can because the house is destroyed. I mean, just straight and simple destroyed. So, and we're going to have the kids here when Adair and I go to Wisconsin with John. They need a bed to sleep in. So today after this, it's going to be official cleanup day. All right. So today we have a new show and it's with Gail Carson. And then I kick off the top of the show with CAFE. Okay, who's Gail Carson? Uh, we discovered Gail Carson at Houston, and she had a booth with exotics from all over the world. And you know how I love working with silks. You know that. And I mean, I dropped a bundle, let me tell you. And Lilo dropped a bundle. And then we started talking to Gail, and we said, you know, it would be really interesting to do a show with you because how do you work with all these exotics? And it was fabulous. And, and trust me, I, I spent money again. And it, the stuff is just, it's to me, it makes my heart go pitter-patter. But then at the top of the show, I did a segment on what I learned in CAFE's class. I took a class, I explained it in the show the day after my retreat. And you know how I love his fabrics. You know how I do. And I would never, in a, here's a quilt I made as a result of his class, and I would never, ever, ever presume to teach what Kaif teaches. I want to be very, very clear on that because he has a very specific style and a way to work. But I'm going to share with you my takeaway from the class. And I will tell you, if you ever, if you love his fabric and you ever have a chance to take a class from him, I would do it. It was a one-day class. 
and I learned so much. But I'm also a maven about taking classes, period. And you know that, right? So a little bit, oh, uh, a little bit more about Cindy. So we were at her studio and across the street, it was just perfect. Across the street was, is a brewery, better yet. And then right behind it, there would be a food cart. And so at five o'clock, we would leave the studio, go over and have a craft beer and something from the food carts. And it was food like, oh, wow, wow, wow. It was all farm to table. I mean, you I, so good. I mean, so, so good. And so I, Wendy wanted to learn how to do little girls. And you know how much I love those. So I decided I wanted to do a teenager. So I went to Laces in San Francisco and I bought a piece. And now actually it has turned into a um, newlywed. <laughs> it's gotten a little bit bigger. I want to show you what I'm working on. So I'm hoping I can get it in here. So here's the center. Let me get it down a little bit deep and... Do it in. Come on, get in there. It's a little tough to see because of the white. There. But I did this, and then this this was just fabulous, a fabulous piece. I have no idea what it was for. And then Wendy had this bobbin lace that she um, let me have, and she let me have it or else she could walk home. <laughs> I'm a tough bargainer. And then I, this is the south side edge I'm working on. And if this at all intrigues you and you have not watched the Cindy Needham show, I commission you to do that. And then what we're going to do on Wednesday, she has these stencils and they are for background fills. And I asked her if she, because she wanted to teach it to Wendy, and I asked her if she would be so kind as to do it on video so you guys could see it too. And it's how, you know, when you have this space and you've got this beautiful quilting, what are some background fills you can do? And then literally how to approach it when you sit down to your machine and sew. So I know you will not be disappointed with Wednesday and you do not want to miss it. I can guarantee you that. Okay. Here's some great things going on. So now let's talk this week also in our store Kristen has put together an oak shot week and we carry oak shot fabrics. They are high end. I will tell you that right now. The beautiful thing about oak shots, in case you've not really heard this expression before, is that the warp and the weft are of different colors and it has a lovely, lovely handle to it. It is not, I mean, it's 100% cotton, but it's very different than what you might get off the bolt in a quilt shop. And um, and it's, okay, so and it, it's, uh, God, it's quit stammering here. It's not like silk as far as like a Dupiani, but it certainly has a different feel to it. I bought a box of it back in the day from our store. It was the last box. In fact, I even bought it for my, uh, one for my friend, um, Robin Maimoni. Oh, why isn't that working? Oh, cause I got to get rid of that image. Okay. <laughs> and it was a box this big. I can't find it. Imagine that I can't find it in this mess and had all their colors in it. And, and I, when I find, I, I actually do keep the lid on it because I don't want it to fade, but I view that as art. And it's going to be a big day when I cut into that. I'll tell you right now. So Kristen, that you met last week, has put a bunch of new Oak Shop things in the store. You might want to check it out. We have a ton of different colors, but we don't have a super abundance of each one. So if you're interested in this stuff, brace yourself. <laughs> it's not inexpensive, but it is absolutely lovely. And speaking of not inexpensive, when we were up at Chico, we went to a quilt shop called Honey Run. It's within, I think, Kathy's Sewing Center. And I bought, bought some beautiful, beautiful handkerchief linen that I, I've never seen before in a quilt shop. So that was, of course, you know, my hand goes to the most expensive bolt. Okay. So what am I going to do with my teenager, Joanne? 
I'm going to probably bind it and view it as art on the wall. It, it is, it is, you go slow, it's meditative, it's wonderful. Uh, I've, frankly, I've had a really hard time sitting down and piecing at my sewing machine. It's, I don't know why, but I've had a really hard time. Super fun doing this, but I don't feel like I want to make a, another block. <laughs> and so this connects me to my machine and it helps me stay balanced and sane. And I even put music on so that I can, you know, sink into that place. I know none of you, I know none of you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. And this room, it's such a mess. But you know what? I, I Taylor Swift has a song called Champagne Problems, and I completely concur with that. So let's take a look at my four blocks that I made while I was up in Chico so that I could show you how to put it together. I could not find the fabric, could not find it, um, that we were doing on the real quilt, but I bought all of this Tula stuff. Oh, wait, I wanted to show, well, okay, hold on. I bought all this Tula stuff and I thought, oh man, this would be really cute. And I will tell you, it's really, it's cute. But the other thing is that I copied you also. One of you, when they trimmed off, let me pull this up. And I, and I pray everything I have for my demos right here, because good luck finding it. When um, I trimmed off the edge at, it's eight and a half inches raw. There seemed to be some confusion. It will finish at eight inches. There would, was this. And one of you put it in your blocks. And I'm going, why didn't I think of that? I just love this. And when I put it up on the wall, Meryl goes, oh, I love that. So here's another one. Super fun. This is going to be a pillow that somebody gets, one of the grandkids gets. All right. Then the other thing I decided to do when we spoke about it last week was I did trim this out. All right. Well, it wasn't from this piece, but... I trimmed out this because here is this print in piece fuse light that I have worked with to prepare this finished edge. And when you wash this product, uh, when the quilt is finished, when the quilt is finished, 80% of it goes away and I don't want to see um, the fabric coming through. So somebody suggested that and I'm like, yay, thank you. Great idea. So I did cut all of it out. Plus, it's one less layer to maneuver when I'm sewing this together. So let's, okay, that's not right. Let's lay this out. Okay, so this, to get, what what we're going to work on is getting these points exactly right. So I'm sorry I don't have more room here, but it is what it is. Put that there. Maybe I can pull this up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Here. And then here. The other thing is I almost made a mistake by sewing the, the sliver on the wrong side. I'm hoping I have Helen's thing here and I don't. Doggone it. In the, um, in the show and tell um, area, she, Helen went and took and made some of these black and some of these white. And it was, it, it, it is stunning, completely stunning. So go into the forum and take a look at that. I really, I, I know I intended to put it up. Sorry, Helen, you really do take good care of us. Both you and Barbara, what would we do? I'm still having forum issues. Okay, so remember, I'm going to turn this one around like this. Um, when I showed you that you wanted this part to reside a quarter inch from from the edge. And yes, you have little ear things left over and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this and I'm going to sew it and I'm going to do the other side and then I'll do the long seam. First of all, when you work with pins, you want extra sharp glass head pins and there's lots of lovely, lovely um, pins on the market, okay? Uh, this is a Quilter Select and we have a little magnet in here so that you can, the pins just drop down, okay? But you just, you just want a beautiful pin 
that is super sharp. They're called silk glass head pins, all right? And um, you'll go through them. They bend and stuff. But what I do is I come in the back side. Let me bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to have to do a little camera switcherooing today just because I'm living in chaos. Okay, first of all, I love that this is going this way, seeing, and this is going this way. Perfect. I'm going to come in a quarter inch from here and a quarter inch from here. And if you don't know, if you don't know what that is, you can certainly use your little ruler and just go like this. You know, I put this down as a supply and it's not necessary, but it's nice when you're doing little details like this to uh, have it so you're not ha hassling around a big old ruler or something like that, okay? So I'm going to bring the pin in here. I'm going to make sure it's coming. In. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that amazing how that works? And then I'm going to go in here, right there. And then I'm going to squish it together. Squish it together. Now, this is going to be a little tricky because you've got more layers than what you're used to using. using. I'm going to drop a pin in a sixteenth of an inch before a sixteenth of an inch after, kind of, and I'm also, okay, see if this can make sense to you what I'm going to say. Here is my quarter inch seam allowance coming down here, and I hate it that I have to refocus it every time. Okay, so I'm here's my sewing machine. I'm going stitch, stitch, stitch. I'm going over where the pin is going under. Stitch, 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 stitch. I'm going stitching where the pin is going under. I found in when I was teaching stars, people would be um, pinning out here in different areas, and you really have to pay attention exactly where you're, where you're going to be stitching. That's where you want to go under. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and see if it looks good. I think it's pretty darn good. Okay, now I've got to pin this other side. So let's do that too. I talk a, a tough game, and in the end, when a quilt is almost done, oh gee, I just like throwing the thing together. Okay, so, one moment please. Okay, and I'm gonna have to move the camera again in a second. Whoops. Okay, right there. It was funny when we were at the uh, brewery. I mean, I'm a wine person, okay? Although after this weekend, I could be persuaded in a restaurant setting. I knew enough that I didn't sound like a complete moron. I want to ask for him. It's feeling pretty cool. <laughs> okay, right at four. I'm going to be stitching down here. Oops, there goes that pin. I love these floors. I, I I had to scoot around some furniture, and it was just no big deal. Or his carpet was a whole other thing. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I am going to put this on my face. Move this camera around. And try and do this sewing around my crazy camera. All right. I cannot believe technology. I cannot believe it. What we have. Okay, upside down. There we go. I turned my light down, so I think we're pretty good. Okay. Also, a bunch of you put orders on my personal site, and I'm going to get those out this afternoon. It's a little tricky because I don't have a printer, but John said we can figure that out. All right, I am using a single hole throat plate down here. And when you are working on a machine that has wider feed dogs, you must get one. Absolutely must get one. In fact, somebody contacted me the other day, and I forget if they had a Foth or an Elna. 
and they didn't know where to get it. And I hooked them, because it was an older machine, I hooked them up um, with Meisner's and they could order it. Uh, if you're in a general purpose, in an area with a general purpose sewing machine store, or let's say you have an Elna, because that's what they sell, but it's an older Elna and you don't have it, go just, you got to score one of those. The other thing I love about my uh, quarter inch foot on Bernina is that it's got this open area right here. And so that way, this, this pin can stay in. Oh, let me see. I might have to turn that all the way off and go braille sewing. Mm. Let me try turning this on see if... There we go, that works, okay. So I am going to leave this in, okay? I'm gonna leave this thing in. I'm gonna come down here. Whoops, and I like to hold it up like this. See, and if it's, the crack is closed, I can't. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Sewing machine, it's been a while since I've played with you. Okay, you can see right there, you gotta trust me, I'm going into the hole and now I can pull it out. If you're inclined, you can pull out the other pins. I'm going so slow. I mean, that's like go over pins at your own risk, all right? I go so slow, although I have wrecked a machine by the needle going down into a pin and the machine actually had to be shipped back to Chicago so the Swiss guys could work on it. I like to have my needle in needle down position. Okay, so see that guy's hanging there. Pull it out. I should have John come take a picture of this so you have an appreciation of what D. Christopher and I are going through. Here, see how it came out? I'm gonna cut it. And now I'm gonna say a little prayer. And this is how you do a pinwheel. This is how you do a lot of these blocks that have things that all come together. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, let's look at this side. I can certainly live with that, all right? Now I have to do um, the other side. Are you gonna take a picture of this? What's the question? Because I gotta switch cameras. What is it? It's kind of a long question. Kind of a long question as I switch this around. Um, after sewing the slivers on, did you re-square the block since the white is not always exactly on the original seam line? Yeah, I probably should have. Did I? No, but yeah, I probably should. Probably should. Just eight and a half inch raw is what you want. All right, so let's pin again. We've got this guy. I don't know, it could be a girl. And I wonder if I'm going to press open or not. One of my rules is if I have six or more seams coming together, I will press open. What am I going to do? I've got to make that decision. Hmm. I wonder what I did on this. No, I did one side to another. Okay, so let's not worry about that right now. Let's get... Um, I want this one here. And this one there with that, this one here, okay? Okay, it looks good, so let me sew this one together. I feel like I should do a tap dance or something. So you wanna know what I asked for, for a beer. I can tell that you're just all really anxious to know. I said, I don't want a light beer. I don't want a dark beer. I want, and I don't want a hoppy beer or an IPA. I don't even know what that means. But, you know, I was the oldest lady there. I had to be, I had to defend my age. <laughs> and, and what he said, oh, that is blah, blah. It's the only one we have here like that. Oh, it was so good. And then Wendy had something like an apricot beer. And it was very, very tart. Very, very good. All right, here's this. Okay, so let me do this one too. Is my iron hot? Yeah. I'm on the home stretch here. It's kind of blurry. 
blurry. I'm sorry, guys. There we go. It's coming in right there. And honestly, like in, um, if there were a couple, if it kind of ends up with an air space, that doesn't bother me as much as if things get chopped up. Okay, I'm going to go like this. Oh, I'm really excited to have you see what uh, Cindy taught me, or Wendy, on Wednesday. And every time I learn, I go to Cindy's, I learn... Um, I learn more things, okay? She is just a master. And the other thing is some of the things I kind of screwed up. And I realize when you're taking a class, you can only take in so much. And then your brain shuts down. And then you have to do it wrong to understand what the person was saying, you know, to have full effect of the whole thing. All right. Let's get this one now. All right, I'm using a 97 foot on the Bernina. It's a dual feed, yeah, I have the dual enacted. I used to love the 37 foot, and it was my fave quarter inch, but I've drifted to the 97, and I can't even tell you why there. I'm holding the pin. I also have an interview coming up with Joe Cunningham a tour of a studio in San Francisco. So that's kind of cool. Let's see. We are so lucky in this area. We've got such a diverse group of quilters. And, you know, it's kind of it's kind of an, um, a charcuterie tray. Hey, I say it, said it right. I never say it right. Uh-oh. I forgot to pin this end. Okay, well, let's... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, you guys aren't my friends. You should have told me that. I must be going this way. Rats. Okay, well, let's go this way. Um, I, is there a song called something like Back in the Saddle Again? I pulled that out too soon. Go. Well, you know what? That gives me the perfect opportunity to show you Cindy's new tool. <laughs> okay, which is a rip and grip. <laughs> so let me cut this out. And actually, I'm glad that happened. Let's talk about tearing things out. Okay, this is the side. Wait. This is what I want to have go bye-bye right here. So what I do, look at this tool. It's awesome. Um, it has a tweezer on one side, and then it's got a seam ripper on the other side. And so you can position it, get out of there, cord, the way you want and go. So this is the seam that's got to go bye-bye. So how I rip is I always have my seam length set just long enough, which happens to be default on my machine, where my seam ripper can just slide inside and just cut. If, you, if it's super tight, it won't cut. I, I mean, it's hard to get in, but look at that. Again, I'm working in the dark, but I'm a trained professional. I can do this. If I cut a little bit into the facing, I'm not that worried about it. Oh, my hand's in the way of the light. I'm glad this isn't my final, because I think I would be flunking it. Okay, let's open this up. Hands frame, yeah. I hear John coming. What's the question, John? You were asking about the little circular thing uh, that they think's a light and maybe a magnifier that's right Oh yeah, um, they're ask You guys are asking about a magnifier that you can put on your machine. You have a little disc there. Oh yeah, that's for the magnifier glass. I have a okay. So there's a disc on your Bernina, right here, and it puts a magnifier on it. I I it does not work for me. I bought it, uh, but for some reason I just cannot get it positioned properly. Okay, let's see how this is. I am using a uh, seven. Uh, either a top stitch um, 
80 or if I'm doing general sewing like this, or I use, like for Cindy Needham's, I was using a 70. Okay, good, we undid that. See, and the cool thing is then you can take your little tweezers and go, pom, pom, whatever. All right, let me, I gotta get this thing back up where it belongs, and then I've gotta press, all right? I just love sewing. I just, or, or quilt. You know, the other thing with these little girls with Cindy is that, uh, you're working with something small, and you are quilting very small, but you're working with something small, which makes it manageable under your sewing machine. All right. There we go. Okay, if I press that one that way, make sure I get these right. I'm going to press this one this way. Oh, here's another tip. If you're ever driving up on Highway 5, um, there's a deli halfway in a restaurant called Grenzella's. Oh, I, the restaurant's okay, but the deli, oh, it's so good. Okay, let's see how we did. I didn't even check. Come on down. Yay! This is a quarter inch here, and this is a quarter inch here. Just the way we like it. So I am now going to trim out those little bunny ears that you guys were asking about. And we're getting into a lot of layers right now. I'm just not gonna worry about it. All right. So basically we're gonna do the same pinning maneuver here where I pin in the back side. I see I'm running a little long, I apologize. Pin in the back side. Wait, where are we? There. I want to come up exactly there, up in that point. Sometimes the back will lie to you. And then I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to, again, drop a pin in on either side. And, and what you can do, boy, this is really thick, and this is where you might lose some pins. They might bend on you. But that's the price of doing business. What I'm going to do right now is before I pin the two ends, I'm gonna take my machine, come on, get in there. Wow, I'm gonna take my machine and I'm gonna put it on a really big stitch and I'm gonna test it. But first I'm gonna go like this. Oh, come on. That looks pretty darn good. But I am going to put my machine, I'm not gonna move the camera, and put a long basty stitch on, maybe four in length. And I'm gonna sew this, hold on, you don't need to watch this. Well, yeah, no, yeah, you do, sorry guys. Because I can't stress this technique enough. Ah, get on here, close your eyes. Tell you when you can open it. And my blouse just got hooked to my bracelet. There we go. Okay, there, that's looking good. But I have a really long stitch on right now. Holding the needle. Pull it out. Cutting the thread. I actually thought about getting a new sewing machine this weekend. Don't tell John. Because I don't like to take my 700 around with me. And man, I miss the features on it. And the 500 has the features. Okay, that's off. Oh, that's off. I'm going to go back. Actually, if I just take a little tuck, I think we'll be okay. It's not quite enough off that I'm going to lose sleep over it. So let's do it again and see if it was way off. The beauty of it is you're just pulling out a basting stitch. Cut. All right, let's take a look, see. Get in there, you crazy thing. Yeah, it's off a little bit, but I can easily, easily live with that. That does not bother me in the slightest. 
so then what I'm going to do, because we are running a little long, is um, I'm going to do the same thing on both ends that I showed before. I'm going to do the double pinning or triple pinning here, triple pinning here, and then I'm just going to sew and I'm going to go straight over where my basty lines was and then I know I'm good. So that's how you do the center. Don't try and um, get crazy and be fast and sloppy. Take your time with it. Uh, on here behind me, there's a couple that aren't wonderful. But look, I can slide around. Whoa! Um, this one is not wonderful. Does it really matter in the scheme of things? No. And when you go and, you know, if it was off an inch, that's a whole nother thing, right? But just a little bit, it just doesn't matter. So what my homework for you is, is to um, get your quilt together. I would strongly suggest, I learned this when Dee did her bit on the last Saturday she taught with the quilter, is when you get it on the way you want, I mean, when you get it sewn together, just go um, do a um, securing stitch less than a quarter of an inch all the way around so that these don't fall apart, right? Because they're sewn together. Then on Monday, we're going to talk about, don't sew your border on yet. Don't do it. We'll talk about that on Monday because you have some options before you sew on this white. All right, so please don't sew it on until next Monday. On Wednesday, you're going to get um, fillers from Cindy Needham. Friday, I haven't a clue. Let's see. Why keep the first pin vertical after you put the two pins horizontal? Why do I leave that in? Because I tell you, if I take it out, it screws up, you know? And I, and, and I think truly, for the most part, you see people take it out before they hit their sewing machine. You, you do. So that's um, Paul. It's Paul, right? Paul, that's an excellent question. And a lot of feet on machines aren't open like the way I showed you. A lot of feet you've got where the needle goes down and then it closes back up like that. So you can't keep your pin in. I, that's just something I do because that's the way the quarter inch feet are on the Bernina. Um, how would I finish it if you wanted just a one spool block? Well, I'm thinking about making this into a pillow. Uh, you mean like if you just want like, do you think you like, one block. like this? Only sewn together. I think. I think honestly, you need the you need the four of them to make the magic happen. You know, and I guess you could do applique around the outside edge. But if I'm probably what I'm going to do is make this into a pillow, and I'll just put a flange on or something like that. I'll maybe that's a little something I can show you how to do how to make a real dirty easy pillow. Um, stitch length with little girls. Excellent question. Because Wendy kept asking that. The stitching is very, very small. Now remember, you don't really set a stitch length because you're doing free motion, right? But it's way smaller than, um, than what I think ordinarily you would do if you were machine quilting a quilt. Let me see, let's take a look. I'm gonna bring the document camera over. Oh, I'm gonna put pearls on this. Oh, it's gonna be so... <sighs> If you haven't seen that show, I haven't been this corned out over a show in like forever. Okay, that's pretty darn clear. Let me see if I can get it any clearer. And then I need some point of reference. Some point of reference. Um, let's use this. I wish I had like a penny or something. But these are, I mean, they're small. Because also, like, if we look at the feather, you know? Oh, the other thing is we mark it with a Frickson pin. And when it's marked and you're stitching and you go, oh, my gosh, this just looks like awfulness, as awful as it gets. When you take your uh, iron and get rid of it, all of a sudden you go, well, you're not so bad after all. Okay, here's another one. When will you teach applique for the quilt? That'll be on after we get the um, after we get the borders on, and, and we aren't going to sew the borders on until 
um, next week. Here's the deal, guys. I am now teaching one day a week, and that will be our Mondays. On Wednesdays, I will take questions. You know, you put them in. Uh, you can email me at um, a l e x a n d r s n at gmail, or put it in the forum if you don't want to wait till Wednesday. And I'm going to try and have like surprise guests or something like that during COVID. And yes, we are still in COVID, but we're opening up. I was teaching, teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it was a real push. And now that we're starting to get our lives back together, there's, it's gonna, I'm going to relax it a little bit so we can enjoy the process, all right? And I don't think there's an issue with that. And I already have the next two quilts figured out what we're going to be doing, so it's not like I'm going anywhere. Can we see how to make the pillow? Yeah, I, I can, I can, I, I, uh, I will try and do that. It could be a Monday thing too, but I mean, because I've got a, I have a little step on, on how to show pillows because that would not be a half hour jam. It would take longer than that. Okay, it's okay. Okay, Paula, what needle with 80 weight applique? Yeah, I probably would use an an aid, a needle with 80 weight applique. I think you mean an 80 weight needle with applique. I think that would work. That would work just fine. It's just this finer stuff, this Cindy stuff, where you want to get it smaller. All right. When will you give us some clues on the part? Sandy, I don't know what you're asking. Some clues on the part of what's next, maybe? I don't know. Glue basting works here too, Nikki says. Um, Nikki too, to Paul, to prevent distortion. Uh, uh, Lib, you didn't need to tell me that. Lib just said she has a Bernina 790. The Bernina 590, mini me of the 790 is the bomb. I know. I know. I and uh, what I was sewing on was 153 and Alex Anderson edition of 153s. Of, the 150 series of Berninas are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful machines. But man, there's just some features on it that I really, really missed. Okay. Also, Rooster just said she bought some more shot cottons and love it. Yeah, that it's just put your seatbelt on when you see how much it costs, but they are beautiful just and they handle and they're just a different breed so um sew away turn on some nice music and i'm gonna have to start cleaning up in here let's see okay abilene says if you are glue basting how do you get your paper out when the glue is on the paper um the paper that we're using for the blades here, if this is what we're talking about, is a wash away. Basically, 80% of it washes away. It's a little stiff when you're, you know, playing with it, but it goes away. So the blocks are going to end up eight inches, which means they are raw eight and a half inches. There seemed to be some big confusion on this, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, so they're raw, eight and a half, finished. Eight. And the and let's see what else. We got a lot going on here. So, anyways, this has been fun. Ran a few, ooh, sheesh, a little more than a few minutes late. I appreciate you. We'll see you Wednesday. You do not want to miss Wednesday. Um, look, I've been around this pool hall for a while, and you know it. And I learned stuff when I was taping that with Cindy. So you do not want to miss Wednesday. Quilting, quilting, stitching, stitching is the one thing, designs, that you cannot have enough knowledge under your belt. Period. That's it. So have a good one, and we'll see you Wednesday. I look forward to sh showing off Cindy Needham's chops. You 